If you're in New England or would like to visit for the spooky season and need to find out about all the haunted happenings in the area, then hang tight. One, one ring. That's a telephone. Uh, 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 I'll answer it. No, I Oof. must count them. Yeah, two, but... two rings. I have to answer the phone there. No, no, I'm counting the rings. Three, three rings. Podcast bone phone. It's Hotcast. I'm Baker, and on my bone phone, I have Alexandra DeColibus from HalloweenNewEngland.com. Alexandra, how are you doing? I am doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, the season is upon us once again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there's no better place to be in the fall than New England. I couldn't agree more. Right? <laughs> I'm a native New Englander. There's no place quite like this area at this time of year. Yeah, autumn is amazing. Yes. <laughs> Especially if you love Halloween, so. <laughs> and if you don't, I have I have no respect for you whatsoever. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> don't want to know you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> All right. So uh, why don't we talk about Halloween New England? And I guess let's start off with when did you start it and yeah. why? Well, started it 10 years ago. So this is our 10th year for Halloween New England. Um, started it much the way that lots of people start things in that they couldn't find something that gave them what they were looking for. And so you end up starting it yourself. So, of course, like a haunt or Halloween directory is not really a new invention, but um, I really wasn't able to find something that had everything in one place for this particular area. So, you know, like a lot of people, you might go to a haunt directory and they don't have everything that you're looking for, or they have a lot of miscellaneous information that doesn't necessarily relate to what you came to find. And so you end up Googling, right? And so you're Google searching for, you know, for things. And then what happens is you've got all these other things that are interfering with you finding all the information. And so, you know, started Halloween New England to be able to put everything in one place. So even those people who are maybe smaller attractions, smaller festivals, smaller Halloween experiences still have a place that they can be on Halloween New England. You don't have to kind of stumble across them through, you know, page five on a Google search, but you'll be able to see it, you know, right there in one place. So we have, you know, over 400 Halloween attractions now on the site in the six New England states, over 2,000 Halloween events. So just in that, in those 10 years, I've seen it just grow so much in that time. I remember back in the day, this is how far mm. I go back. Um, the only place that you could find, this was pre-internet, of course, yeah. back in the, back in the 80s when I used to try to find haunted attractions or anything mm-hmm. like Halloween, you know, uh, corn mazes, things like that. Yeah. You'd have to go, you'd have to wait for, uh, I forget what, what week it would come out, but it was always, um, it was, I think on a Thursday, they used to do these calendars in the Boston Globe that was like yeah. the calendar magazine insert that they would put yeah. in there. And yeah. you'd have to rip that thing apart and go through yeah. and try to find, and it was... It's always so difficult trying to find any type of haunt, you know. That's um, it. That's it. I mean, yeah. I, I, I have a wonderful developer who helped build the site from the ground up because I'm certainly not, you know, someone who's able to do that. But what I can do is organize that information and I have that vision for it. And I really, you know, I'm a haunt fan. I'm a Halloween fan. I'm the person I built it for <laughs> you know, in a lot of ways. I know that people just need information in an organized way. And just like you're saying, those Ways that we used to find out about things or those community events that sort of happened every year, you know, those things don't always, you know, continue forever or new things come up and how do they come across your radar? So it's just a matter of being able to get that information in one place so that people can find it. And it's, you know, it's all kinds of events. It's like the little community hayride to the professional hayride or the giant pumpkin festival to the little pumpkin festival, you know, on the town green. There's just such a wide variety of ways that people experience it. And like you're saying, like, I'm sure the globe does not do anything like that anymore. And so where do people look for that information? Yeah. Halloween New England. I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> And one of the things, oh, go ahead, go ahead. 
No, I'm always I'm always on the lookout for what's what's happening around the areas. Yeah. Usually, I'm looking for haunted attractions. Mm, you know, is there okay. anything that I'm uh, new? Is there anything I'm not aware of? Mm. Um, you know, what's in my area? There's not much on Cape Cod, unfortunately. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> not, that's true. Yeah, the but, Cape is, um, is a dead zone for a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff. Although there may be more community events that just are so small that they haven't come across my radar, but I wish for those little events as much as the, the big stuff too. But I, yeah, I mean, as far as what's new, what's new this year, I've seen certainly some trends with more. One of the things that kind of excites me personally is a lot of horror musicals. So I just saw Evil Dead, the musical in HD uh, in Nashua last weekend, which was unbelievable and very messy <laughs> there's um lizzie the musical is coming up which is all a musical about lizzie borden there's an exorcist musical going on in maine and you think musical theater and you know horror like how did these things come together but that's something that i am an actual trend that i have seen in the past probably two or three years really coming on a bit stronger which is I love that, right? It's so creative. It just shows that there are so many different ways to engage in the holiday or in Halloween adjacent or horror adjacent things. I love haunts too. So, you know, I feel, I feel you, you know, when you, when you want, you don't necessarily have a haunt in your backyard and you got to travel. Do you travel quite a bit to go to haunts? <laughs> like in, in, in New England I, specifically? I, I I, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, there's nothing near me. So if I want to go to a haunt and I always want to go travel. to a couple, a couple of year, I uh, travel, go to New Hampshire. Yeah. Um, I've been into Rhode Island. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, I've been to some in Massachusetts, yeah. but I find the better ones are out of Massachusetts just yeah. by, you know, no, no disrespect to the, uh, <laughs> the well, Massachusetts haunt, but uh, I do find that I really like, I do, I, I will travel. Uh, I think ha Halloween overload is about, or haunted overload is yeah. about as far as I will travel yeah. and it's worth traveling. Yeah, so yeah. I will go three hours if I have to, to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, there's, I mean, there is, um, you know, we have, for those who are listening who are not in New England, we have six states that are considered New England and it's pretty easy to get from each state. You know, every state is basically within an hour's drive or less, some much closer so, you know, when I, I live in Massachusetts, but I can go to Connecticut, you know, for the evening and see a couple of haunts or how I like to do it in the case of Halloween New England is I'll just park myself in a New England state for the weekend and just see, you know, anywhere from six to 10 events in that weekend, depending on what I can fit in. So I can usually hit about two haunts a night, depending on where I park myself and how well I plan. And then there might be some daytime Halloween stuff. But um, one of the things that I noticed, and I don't know if it interests you, you know, being being a local like me, which is the uh, Halloween New England has these haunt guides. So if you, you know, if you have a Sunday night free or if you don't love the crowds that are around at a haunt on a, on a Friday or Saturday night and you want to go on a Thursday night or a Sunday night, I have haunt guides to show you which haunts are going to be open during the season on a Thursday night, you know, so every Thursday night or every Wednesday night that there's a haunt open, it's listed, you know, in our haunt guide. Same thing for Sunday night. So it's a way of being able to kind of fit in more in your season than you might typically do if you're just thinking about Halloween as like Friday and Saturday night events. There's just so much to do, but people like you and me who love to see as much as possible, you know, that's, that's within reach to us. You got to go on Thursdays, you got to go on, on Sundays, in addition to your Fridays and Saturdays. But some places are a little bit more dense. Um, I don't know if you've traveled much to Connecticut, but there's a real density of haunted attractions in Connecticut where you really can see two in an evening. Um, you could make a weekend of it and you can easily see six haunted houses and just like plant yourself, yeah. you know, with a hotel room and you can really capture a lot. I really have to do that. Yeah. I have not been to Connecticut. I actually oh. lived briefly in Connecticut and uh, for about a year and a half for work oh. back in the mid nineties, yeah. uh, late nineties. And I have not really been back. <laughs> I've gone through, but I haven't oh. really gone back and I would love to get in. I, I, you know, now that you're mentioning this, I have to put it on, you know, now that it's on my radar, you have I have to, to. make a point. Connecticut has a really vibrant haunt scene, and partly because there's so many pro haunts in Connecticut. So there's just a density of it. There's a lot of cross-pollination, you know, in that area. 
And because there's so many haunts, they really keep raising the caliber every year because they have to, right? They have to create something different, create something new, bring their own twist to it, have their own personality. It's you're really missing out, you know, and I hope that you'll kind of circle Connecticut as a place to be able to visit if you haven't already explored, like, the many haunts that are in that area. Yeah, the more competition you have, people have to up their game yeah, to yeah. outdo their comp- the competitor. So yeah. it, cu- it forces people to be better, you know, yeah. to be more innovative. Yeah. More entertaining, because that's yeah. what you're going there for, to be entertained. And you get to um, learn, so. right? Like, you get people who are, yeah. you know, kind of come up through these haunts, and then they finally, you know, they've got the bug, they've got the passion, and they're ready to just, like, bring the blood, sweat, and tears to their own attraction and kind of make it their own in some way. So there's, you know, when you have that that amount of density of attractions in a place like Connecticut... Everybody knows everybody, right? Everyone's, you know, kind of worked here, volunteered that one at different points. And so you get to learn the variety of what's available to you when you're in a more rural place where you don't have a, that same access to it. it can be so challenging because you only see really what's as close to you as possible. You don't have the benefit of seeing the full range of styles and approaches to haunting. So, yeah, you, you got to go to Connecticut because it's uh, I think it's like a hidden secret <laughs> in, in the country yeah. for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think I had my first exposure to Rhode Island haunts mm. about two years ago. I never ventured into Rhode Island. Ah! I would always be going up to New Hampshire. <laughs> and I went down there and I hit a couple of haunts uh, with some buddies, you know, some people yeah. I know online and met up with them. And, and um, you know, it was a good experience. I was yeah. like, wow, I this wasn't once again on my radar whatsoever, and now it is. So yes, well, I'm going to change uh, I, that I, for you. <laughs> <laughs> I built this site for people like you. Like, why? Why are you just hanging out, wondering why there are mountains yeah. in your area when I have got them all like on a platter for you? <laughs> now, do you have do you have home haunts on your website? <laughs> That's a great question. I, you know, unfortunately, at this point, I've had to draw the line in terms of, the, of, of what I am listing. And part of that is there's so many home haunts, right? And they have often very abbreviated schedules, maybe just a weekend or two weekends. And a lot of them just fly really under the radar that I feel like if I were to start adding that to Halloween New England, and it's you know, I've stuck a pin in it. It still could happen, yeah. right? But I really would need to bring on a team member who's just dedicated to researching that, yeah. adding it to the site, and kind of giving it that full yeah. attention. Yeah. Now, I, personally, I have a yard haunt. I've been doing mm. it for I don't know how many years, yeah, decades. Um, awesome. I don't want any exposure to my. I, I don't need any more people showing up and, oh. and pissing off my neighbors. Yeah, yeah. And like I, I, I'm trying to down. I'm trying to cut back on the amount of people who show up with yes. with social media. Yeah. It's kind of difficult nowadays uh, right. because everybody just you know texts their friend or you know is on you know is live on tiktok or whatever yeah, and yeah. i'm like i do not need that please don't post about my haunt anywhere please <laughs> but uh i know some people are always trying to like get more people i'm like i need less people <laughs> you no, take some you of know, my people right? more, more people more problems right <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know more and, people. and that's the thing like if you're if you're having a haunt out of your home or your backyard or you know even just a local community event you know, the the bigger it gets, the again, I don't want to say that people are problems, but like the more things could could crop up. And there's a point yeah. where when somebody makes the decision to take that that big step to becoming a pro attraction where they've got, you know, they're not at their home, right? They're in a standalone building or or, or a trail that's separate, you know, a, a business or a property that's not their own personal space. Um, they're carrying insurance, right? They're having a different kind of standard that yeah. they're trying to meet. Then they know, like, well, I've got all this, um, this the safety net, right, in some ways of insurance. Like, you just know to open a pro hunt, you've got to have security. You've got to think through all those details. And, it, you know, there's something that you lose in the, in the personal field, right, that you get in a, in, a, in a yard hunt when you tend to take that step to pro. So I can see why some people may just, like, I love, you know, just the right amount. I love doing my thing. I don't want all those extra, you know, those extra things that come with Somebody, you know, twisting an ankle, <laughs> you know, in my back. Yeah, no, I, I totally get it. Yeah. Uh, hey, um, question I have is, yeah. does somebody, to be listed, to to get some exposure on your website, do they yeah. have to be a sponsor or advertiser? No, or can no. they actually get, 
Oh, they don't? Oh, great. No, people can be listed for free. There's a way to submit their uh, Halloween event or their Halloween attraction. Attraction is usually defined as, again, like a a minimum of five nights or more, a, you know, a, a for example, I do sometimes people will submit their their um, their home haunt through as an event because it's usually a smaller smaller um, you know a fewer fewer set of dates than a, a pro attraction. But yeah, people can submit through their event. They can submit their attraction. I'm happy to list. I mean, most of the people who are listed are listed for free, and then people who love the extra exposure want to be able to stand out from the crowd. I mean. With over 2,000 Halloween events, sometimes people want to be able to stand out, you know, on some of those denser states that have a ton of events. So, yeah, I mean, I work with all kinds of people. And, you know, what I go to see are pro attractions. I see small community attractions. I see a wide range every season, well over, you know, 30, 35 events a season. Okay. Yeah. So, basically, all of the different types of events you have on yeah. on the site, you've got pro haunts, you've got... Yeah. Pumpkin patches. You've got uh, what? You corn Flash, mazes. I flashlight corn mazes. Haunted corn mazes. Uh, you know, a lot of like immersive theater. Hor- that's horror adjacent things. I have horror movie screenings. So anything that would be like a a classic horror movie screening or an outdoor horror movie screening. Like a you know, there's wonderful one they're doing like a series in um, in downtown Hartford called Spooky Popcorn that has all you know the, uh, every Saturday horror movie outdoors. It's just free for everybody. They have popcorn available. Like, there's so many ways that, that people kind of engage in the season. So there's there's you know I'd say my particular passion is you know haunts and scary stuff. That's how I you know I like to kind of get my blood flowing that way. But I see the full range for sure. Anything we haven't covered that you want to mention about the site? You know, I would encourage people who aren't familiar with this area or haven't been to New England to come in the fall and to make a, a long weekend of it or a couple weekends. It's a beautiful place to come for vacation, certainly. But as I mentioned, it's very, very easy to go from state to state. So you can be in you know, Massachusetts and see a couple states, you can go up to New Hampshire. I'm sorry, you can see a couple haunts, you can go up to New Hampshire the next night, see a couple more haunts. Maine has some wonderful haunts, you know, really nice, um, haunt, you know, a series of haunts that are going on up there. Connecticut's super dense. You can fit so many things in, in a small area. And I think people who are from other parts of the country who come here, they, they just don't realize how accessible it is to look at different states and just kind of crisscross through through the six New England states. So um, my site makes it easy. I would encourage people to, you know, check things out. There's, you know, the haunt calendars that list all the events. If you just want to check out haunted houses, there's haunt guides for each state. There are maps so you can see all the haunted attractions listed on the map and you can kind of you know, see what the what the highways are and how you can kind of access different things, what's in your area. You can search for events by zip code. I mean, on and on. It's just meant to make it really, really easy. And then for fans, and I'm sure you have just a million haunt fans, you know, really the people that I'm speaking to, people like me, which are the haunt guys, you know, come and, you know, support your haunts on Thursday nights, Wednesday nights, Sunday nights. My site makes it super easy. Go visit places early in the season. They want your business early in the season. So many places open in September. You know, you just got to go out and check it out. It gives you opportunities to see the full range of what's in your neighborhood. But I hope you come to my neighborhood. (laughs) Come out here to New England and be able to see all the incredible things that we have. All right. So, Alexandra, um, we'll leave it at this. If you're looking for anything Halloween related... Mm -hmm. In New England, <laughs> you have to go to HalloweenNewEngland.com. Thank you Am so I much right? for having me. I really appreciate everything that, that you're doing to be able to get the word out. And I, you know, people see me with my Halloween New England swag. Please say hello. I would love to meet you. I'm going now. Heaven help you. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. And don't forget to turn on notifications. So you won't miss any hot content that is dead ahead.